Yo, yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to today's video. All right, we're going to jump right in. I am going to teach you how to define your ideal customer avatar. If you've never heard that and you've never done it, I hate to break it with you. You're losing an obscene amount of money. Let's talk about it. So what in the world is an ideal customer avatar, ICA? Well, I'll be honest, in the consulting and marketing world, it's definitely this fancy terminology that gets people's attention, gets the ears to raise up because they're like, holy crap, never heard of that before. And the person who is now currently saying it is definitely, you know, someone that knows what they're talking about. So I will come clean and say that I've used it conversationally to get people to be like, whoa, this guy's a big deal. Be like, what's your ideal customer avatar? What's your ideal this, ideal that, right? Well, when you get past all the fun and games and you actually realize that it's the defining difference between the future of marketing versus the old way of marketing, you're going to realize that you need to jump on this bandwagon. So most people think that, and we've been taught that, if you define your target market, Eventually, if you define your target market and you kind of tune your branding and your look and your feel to those people, you take that look and feel, you blast it out to your entire town that the right people are going to show up. Now, it's a generalized approach though, right? Wow. Thumping and bumping, big dog. All right. I don't know if y'all could hear that, but a car passed by with some crazy 15-inch subs or something. It shook the whole building. So... Here is the uh, like logical, practical example. I want you to check this out. If you're sitting there and you're defining your market and you say, well, my target market, um, I don't know, let's say you do, I'm, I'll come off the cuff. Let's say you do maternity pictures um, and you're a photographer and you like to do maternity photos, right? Or you just like to take photos like that. You'd say, well, my target market is probably um, you know, women between 18 and 35 that are about to have a baby or have just had a baby, right? And so you'd go look at the data maybe and you'd say, well, in our town, there's actually a lot of women between 18 and 35. But an ideal customer avatar takes that and helps you really focus in on your ideal customer, like, dream about who you want to work with. Now, listen to this. Not just who you want to work with, but we under, want to understand their wants, their needs, their pain points, their goals, what has caused them to look and feel that way. And we can actually write out a profile of be like, this is my ideal person. So when I do that, so let's say that was my maternity business. I want to keep this example as practical as possible. I would actually say, okay, it's 18 to 35-year-old women. But I also want to talk to women, let's say you have like a real earthy vibe. I want to talk to women who love like earthy, Pinteresty, outdoorsy, artistic type of shoots because that's what I like to do. And then I, I need to make sure that I'm not the cheapest in my industry and I don't want to lower my prices because I have an artistic touch that other people don't have. And at my price point, I want to talk to people who understand the value of what I do because I don't want to haggle them on saying, can you make it look like this or can you make it this affordable? No, your ideal client is someone who can afford your offering, right? And has a respect and excitement for the way that you do business. You can do that, right? I just did a, a marketing workshop for one of the largest, it's crazy, this company's huge, like 40 million a year. And they sell metal buildings, these really nice, like forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars metal buildings. And when we were talking, I said, guys, the person that actually picks up the phone and calls you is most likely someone who is like rough, tough, blue collar, likes to hunt, owns four wheelers, is an outdoorsy person who, if I'm really defining them, they are fighting for the status and the feeling that they can finally have their toys and have a place to protect it. And I think they make between seventy-five and $125,000 a year, and they finally are getting to enjoy the spoils of what they work their ass off for. So your ideal customer is when you get on the phone, you can say things like, man, are you ready to finally house? You already busted your butt, get in the four-wheeler, get in the side-by-side, 
Like now it's time to protect those things. I said, talk to them like you already know who they are. Your close rates are going to go up. That's an ideal customer avatar versus a target market. Gives you the confidence to talk to people like you've already read their mail. Like, hey, I know you. When you called me, I designed my business for you. I thought about you when I wrote that sales copy, when I wrote that email, when my assistant answered the phone and talked in a term, like used terms in a feeling that made you feel like you were already wanted because we designed that all for you. You're our ideal customer. We're not going for everybody in town. We're going for you. What you're going to find is that people will legitimately show up with a smirk and a smile on their face because, like I said, you read their mail and you're doing it in their face. You're actually telling them the truth. I did all this for you. I don't want everybody in this town. I want you. So last practical example, we're doing a cryotherapy center that we just did this, their sales funnel, their website, branding, photo shoot. Like we went through a workshop. I trained their owners how to talk about it and go through their ideal customer avatar. And it's like, Their ideal customer is someone who can afford to invest in their body, but is willing to explore new options and they're willing to educate themselves on new things to make their life and their body better. If someone's not willing to stretch and invest in themselves and learn new things, don't talk in circles convincing your friends, your family, other people that are never going to try this. Don't lower your prices or shift the way you do business for people that aren't your ideal customer. We've been doing it for way too long. We used to do it at our church. We used to do it. I've seen tons of organizations is that we widen that net because we, we just, we just, we'll take anybody. The wider your net, the bigger the holes. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and the fish you're supposed to catch is slipping through. Okay. You do not need a cast net. You need the right bait with one hook, and you'll catch the right fish. And as goofy as that is, I hope it was profound because it works. The people that buy into that today and for the next 10 years are going to control their market and grow their business and their social media following exponentially better than anybody else. And it all starts with ideal customer avatar. Who's my ideal customer? What do they think about? How do they feel? What's their past? How do they spend their money? Let's like really draw that person out. And then when I'm on the phone and when I'm closing, when I'm writing, when I'm posting, when I'm making commercials, when I'm doing all that stuff I'm doing, that's who's on my mind. hundred percent of the time. That's how you level up and your marketing moving forward. So Wow, that felt good. Hope you enjoyed that ideal customer avatar. If that was valuable in any way, shape, or form, make sure to smash that like button. Comment down below. It helps a ton. Share with one of your fellow entrepreneur, friends, family members, or someone that you think this could be valuable for. And until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys. 